three pieces of advice that when I look back at my working career that I wish I would have taken heed to. They were told to me when I was younger. I didn't listen all the time. And it made, in some situations, uh, a more difficult uh, work circumstance than was necessary. So I want to share with you those three things that I learned so you could make sure that you shape your days um, and don't make some of the mistake, same mistakes. Uh, so number one, uh, know your worth and protect it. Um, you know, one of the things that I, it's easy for us to get uh, instru- uh, institutionalized into thinking that what we do as a job defines us. So if you're a doctor, then you're a doctor. If you're a laborer, you're a laborer. And what ends up happening is that creates in our minds a hierarchy in the rest of the world. But the fact of the matter is, is I was never an HR person. I was Sabado and my job was that of an HR person. So I was always able to keep in mind that who I was was separate from what I did. So it gave me the flexibility to make changes when I, when I need to make changes. Um, and standing up for yourself, you know, you, when, you, when you know your worth, it makes it so much easier to stand up for yourself. There were situations that uh, when I was working that were really difficult. And it's, it was, I, I found myself in a bit of a conundrum because if I were assertive about uh, my position on something, then people might have said that I was aggressive because that's the stereotype that I fall under. I'm African-American. I'm six foot eight. I have a deep voice and I'm, I'm deeply convicted about the things that I believe to be true. And, um, but there were times when I just said, you know what, what's good. I just, I won't fight this battle. It's not a hill worth dying on. But what ends up happening is that you end up losing the battle because you never battle on any of the hills and you just get to the end and, you know, and believing in yourself, you know, when you, when you know your worth, um, you have a belief in yourself. It's funny. I was, I was watching a, a documentary about uh, Tiger Woods and I know a lot of people have a diff- lot of differing opinions about uh, Tiger Woods. You can share those in the comments. But one of the things that uh, Tiger did early on in his career is he's he was asked in an interview what his goal was in the PGA Tour in the first year. Um, and he started talking about winning golf tournaments. And so anybody that uh, knows anything about professional golf knows that it's a sport that's an incredibly difficult sport to win. And even if you're in the at the top of the game. And so the guy told him, you know, you have a lot to learn. And then a few tournaments into his, his rookie season, if you will, he won some tournaments. But the underlying piece of that is that he believed in himself 100% of the time. Tiger Woods knew that he could win tournaments. Whatever it is that you know that you can do, go out, do that, and be it. Uh, as they say, you know, go out, set your price, and live your life. And if every, anything is ever too expensive then you just switch and do something else. But don't ever let anything question your belief in yourself because once you lose that confidence or that belief in yourself gets shaken, then it becomes difficult to build anything else from that. Uh, Number two, uh, never compromise your values. Never, 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 for never, never. (laughs) Never compromise your values. Uh, Do what you think is right 100% of the time. You know, when you get down, as you go down the long, windy road of life, there's going to be a lot of uh, situations that come up where you're going to have to uh, make a decision. And sometimes those decisions are unpopular. And I'll, I'll tell you one time, um, I, I was uh, years ago, years ago, I used to work at, I used to work at Costco uh, in my, back in my 20s. And uh, when I was in college, I was maybe before I was in my 20s. But anyway, I digress. Back, I used to work at, at Costco. So one day, uh, I'd come back, come to the front from the bailer in the back because I was bailing boxes. And I saw the supervisor in front and she was uh, making a, uh, making, uh, talking to a, a customer, Asian customer. And so when the Asian customer walked away, she made faces kind of mocking, um, you know, doing that, 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 that stereotypical mocking of, of uh, Asian and Pacific Island people. And so everybody around the supervisor desk started laughing, except for me. I looked at her, and then she looked at me and says, what's wrong? I said, I just didn't think that was funny. And everybody else was laughing, and then she stopped, and it made it really uncomfortable. But one of the things that I learned very early on is that, and I told her this, is, you know, you're making a joke about her because she's in front of you and she's no longer here. But if it's me, then you're making the same jokes about me when I walk away. 
And I, you know, so I, I learned a long time ago that you really have to stand up for what's right because it's easy for people to stand for the cause when they're standing in front of you because what else are they going to say? You know, I'm six eight. Nobody's going to say anything bad. But what is it when people say that you're le- when they're leaving? And so I want to make sure that I could rest assured every night saying I did what I thought was right 100 percent of the time and didn't let anything ever question my values or bring them into, um, you know, bring them into question. And, you know, the reality is, is sometimes we ask ourselves the questions like, well, if I say something then I might lose my job. But, you know, the fact is, is that if you lose your job or you get written up or something happens, uh, you get to have an adverse employment action because you went after and you did the right thing. Then I think and you're worried about losing your job, then I think you're asking yourself the wrong question. The question you should ask yourself is, am I working for the right company? Uh, because, again, there's certain behaviors that you might do. Uh, you might go fishing. Your boss doesn't like fishing. That's not a value. But if there are things that are part of your underlying value system, things that if you look at yourself and you say, this is who I am at the core of my being, and this is and it's based on the right thing, and you're going to lose your job because of that, then you just don't want to be there. And then, you know, and the, 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 the last one I'll say on that is that there's going to be situations that come up where you're in question. And again, because you're always focusing on doing what's right from a values perspective, you never really have to worry about whether or not what you're doing is right or wrong or trying to hide any of the evidence. And so when in doubt, document. Um, when people ask you to do things that don't seem right, and I, it's funny because I, when I started my career, I, I never really understood the importance of the, of the written word. But when you write something down, it really takes on a new meaning. If you have a manager that's asked you to do something nefarious or, or do something illegal, write it down. Because when you ha- when it's your time to explain what happened, number one, you're very clear on what happened because you wrote it down. And number two, people have higher confidence in the fact that what you're saying is true because you actually took the time to write it down. So when in doubt, you know, document. But never, ever, ever, ever compromise your values for another person. Um, and because the fact of the matter is, is a lot of times they're asked you to compromise your value so you don't compromise, so they don't compromise theirs. And then who ends up getting in hot water when something comes about? You. And the worst part about that is you know you shouldn't have done it in the first place. And so you walk away frustrated with yourself. And then the third piece I'm going to say, and this one's going to sound simple and you hear it a lot, people talk about it, but I don't know that people really do this. And so I want to make sure as a, as a reminder to set boundaries uh, at work. You know, it's easy for us to get into an environment of people with a, with a common purpose or what seems to be a common person's purpose and a common mission. But it's interesting how when things impact yourself or your family, then people have a tendency to call you selfish. Then people will start to say you're not focused. Then they'll say, you know, you're not committed to the organization. They'll give you a whole bunch of stuff. But at the end of the day, you are the CEO of your family. It is up to you to do what's right for your family. And so um, one of the things that I used to do uh, years ago as uh, when I was leading up the uh, HR function is I would do a lot of learning and development work. And so I was, I was part of a team, a global team that went around the world and, and taught um, leadership. And so in these courses, we'd have to travel. And they were three-day seminars. And we'd, go, we'd leave on Monday, come back Thursday. Leave on Monday, come back Thursday. And it doesn't seem like it's a bad deal because you're on the road a lot and you're having a lot of fun and you're meeting a lot of people and you're really driving things uh, through in the organization. But one of the things it does, it, it takes away time to build other relationships. And so you really have to be cognizant of, of your time because if you take the time away from A for B, then A never gets that time back. And I think there were some, some real consequences in terms of my relationships uh, with, my, with my daughter and with others that I knew at the time. And then just having the time to build relationships because I was working so much. And so I was able to get back from that and I think recover. But at the end of the day, that's still time that's lost. So do you ever recover for something you can never regenerate again? No. So that's time that I lost. Um, and a, a, another thing they talk a lot about, and I think this falls with setting boundaries, is focus on your work-life balance. Nobody knows your work-life balance better than you. Nobody knows that, you know, sometimes on a Thursday afternoon, you just got to sit down in a quiet space and relax. 
So nobody knows that sometimes you need to come in later on a certain day or you need to or you need to leave earlier or you just need to take a day off, whatever it is. But, you know, there's a and I, I've, I've been guilty of it where I, I go into the office and I'm on a project and it's an exciting project. I just get going. And what ends up happening is I'm working 12 hour days, which means I'm going in at seven, leaving at seven, getting home at seven thirty, eight o'clock, then spending maybe an hour with my wife and then going to bed and doing it all over again. And then on the weekends, I'm so exhausted. I don't have time to do anything because I'm too tired. And I'm trying to rest. You know, if, if I'm if that is a, an example of, of no work life balance and, and we all do it. So we have to. Make sure that we um, that we that we focus on our own on our own balance, and you know if you if you set if you sit back and you look, you know I I think I've mentioned before that one of the things that's really important to me is the wisdom of the universe. So I, I talk about the wisdom of the universe, and one of the things that comes from the wisdom of the universe is that I always believe that the wisdom of the universe is always going to coalesce around the right idea. And so when you're trying to figure out what's my work-life balance and as opposed to trying to create an answer, sometimes it's good just to sit back and say, what's the answer? Let me see what the universe tells me the answer to this question is, and then you'll find it yourself. And it's funny because most of the time when we let things kind of come in organically, they work really good. Where we run into problems most of the time is when we try to manipulate or we try to maneuver or we try to manufacture the outcome that we want to that we want to go to. And, and it's a tough one because... On one end, you know, you got a guy that's talking about, you know, you can retire early and here's how you could work and here's how you can do some of this. But on the other side of the coin saying, you know, don't focus so much on the outcome, focus on the journey. But the but the the outcome is already my opinion is that the outcome is already predetermined and it's a matter of how you get to the outcome that you that uh, that makes all the difference. And, And if you try to force it, that's when things happen when you get into a relationship if you get into a bad relationship and you force it, bad things happen. Friendships, bad things happen. Jobs, bad things happen. Um, you know, anything you do, uh, having a contract, it doesn't feel right. You do it anyway. Guess what? Bad things happen. So, you know, so but the, the, the reality is, is that it's really up to you. It's your choice. It's your decision. It's your responsibility to make sure that you find a balance that's right for you. And if an organization isn't giving you the balance that you need, then you have to ask yourself, what's more important, my own mental health or the mental health of the collective mental health of the organization? And trust me, organization will do fine with or without you. um, But you got to make sure that you're in a position to do fine with or without the organization. And, uh, And the last piece of it is, you know, just keeping, you know, your work and your family separate. So, you know, it's funny when I uh, there was a period of time where I had a home office for an organization that was in uh, North Carolina. And so I would be up at five o'clock every day on the phone and then off of the phone at six o'clock every night. So it's five in the morning to six o'clock in the evening working from home. Everything I did included my family. So I might travel and stuff, but when people would come into town, I involved my family. When colleagues would want to have dinner, I'd involve my family. You know, I would always involve my family, which was fine. But then what ended up happening was I, I, I had to start asking myself the question is what's the difference between my family and my job? So as I as they, when things went sideways with work, then there were people from work that would call uh, call people in my personal life and vice versa. So then it just got really messy. And so when it was time to leave, it was actually more difficult because there's a lot more that I, that I had to unravel. So, you know, it's important to have those boundaries. It's good to have friends at work, but it's also good to have friends at home and it's good to keep them separate because you got to have somebody to talk to the other about and without there being something, uh, coming back to bite you. So, so again, today I wanted to give you just a quick, um, you know, uh, 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 some quick pointers while you're still working, because again, I know that we talk about setting goals and we talk about putting together lists and we talk about getting ready for retirement. And, but there's also the mind game that you have to play with yourself because now that it's an opportunity or now that it's a possibility for you, I know there's a lot of you out there that are saying, man, you know, I, I just can't get there soon enough. And it's hard because now you're starting to wind down as opposed to count up. And so, there's some things that if you do these things while you're working, it'll help make that time a little bit easier. 
doesn't take away from the fact that you still have to get up and go into work and help somebody else meet their objectives all day. But what it does do is it gives you a, a sense of a, a peace of mind that uh, I'm going to I can make it. I can do this. I've done this for 20 years. I've done this for 30 years. But now now I can do it. So um, and as always, if uh, if you if you like the channel, find the information helpful in any way, you should please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, you know, again, the goal here is I never sell anybody anything. It's a matter of trying to give good information to, to people. And unfortunately, not everybody has access to all the same information. So it's, my goal is to make sure that you that people have access to the information. If you have questions, I try to answer all the questions. And if I need to do some research, I'll do some research for you. But on that note, I think we're uh, I think we're about done. Um, so have a good rest of your day and uh, I will talk to you soon.